Oh, I'm Mighty Frog tonight. So the Inanimate Fox, Amphibia, Little Froggy season. Uh, one, I like how they changed the intro. Two, was her leg always that color? I don't know. Um, but they changed the intro a little bit. Really, all they added was I think like really the lights around everything, and they gave Anne red and green hair. Which I, which one I thought was an edit, but then uh, I edit on Twitter, and then it's like, oh no, they added it for this Christmas thing. I guess make it more festive, even though. Everyone, I love it. Everyone says, it's Sasha and Arcee's canon! Because red with green and blue eyes. It'd be cool if that's actually... This is like hinting at like a final form kind of thing where she channels all the calamity powers. Though... Though that would be cool, I would prefer to see and Sasha and Marcy all go super at the same time. But, this is Little Froggy Christmas. It's a Christmas episode, which... Was there was there a Christmas episode for the first season? The first two seasons? Was there? I feel like there was a... I feel like there was. And now I can't... I don't remember if that's the case. Uh, actually, let me... I have the power of Google. Because I legitimately feel like there was like... Because there, there was... Hol there's a hol I know there's the Halloween episode. Let's see. Uh, Civil War. Hot Popular. Uh, fishing Bazaar, uh, Reunion, Children of the Spore, Anne of the Year. I guess that was more of a New Year's special, maybe? And then Season 2, uh, Colors, Battle of the Bands, Dinner, Return to Wartwood. I know that, I know there was the Halloween episode in Season 2. I don't know. Uh, but this is the Christmas episode, which, one, cool. You know, it's a cool thing. It's, I, basically, one, I, one, also, I do love, I, I do, one, I, I do love, like, because basically the whole, the whole precipice of this is, they love Christmas. They love Christmas, and the planners have no idea what Christmas is, and basically, uh, the the Boon Choi family has the option to be in the parade for this year, uh, Christmas parade. Uh, but Anne's mom says, no, we, we shouldn't do that because we need to keep a low profile to keep the planners safe. Though, they're like, one, I'd be like, simple thing would be like the planners would say like, you know, you can go do that. You know, we, we don't have to be part of it. You know, it could be on the planner side of being like, you know, you've done so much for us, you know, we can do this for you and not be in it. But, whatever. Uh, uh, but basically, and also the planners have no idea what Christmas is, and like throughout the entire episode, they're trying to learn what Christmas is, which I really do love all the skating around Jesus, <laughs> but I do love that they bring up every other aspect of Christmas, <laughs> like, uh, like they go through like multiple people asking like, time has come. Wow, that was almost perfect aim. Uh, oh. <laughs> the Simpsons. This bone structure is perfect for Santa! It started with the recognition of the winter solstice and the burning of a Yule log in the 4th century. See, like, she goes through, like, actual history stuff about Christmas, which I really like. And not only that, like, so also this is the part where, like, basically, uh, the parents say no, Anne's like, well, I'm gonna build it anyways, because the Christmas gift to you, Mom. Options. That is a reference to the whole idea that uh, Santa Claus wearing red and white is tied to Coca-Cola uh, using Co using uh, Santa for their advertisement for that. I can't remember if that's true or not. Or like, I think Santa wearing red and white might have predated that, but I remember that that was a big thing. Make it stop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this image is. It has too much knowledge. Ugh. And all of this resulting in a celebratory period of feasting and gift giving with family and friends. Why do you look like that? You asked. Huh? Also, I'm pretty sure that's the voice of uh, of uh, that voice actress for number five from uh, Kids Next Door again. That <laughs> kind of laugh is like very much. Anyways, uh. Well, that's going on. King Andreas gets a gift from the little Newt guys, uh, which is to control, which is this 
very festive colored totally not like any other of the robots that have been built uh mechs uh that you can control with a playstation controller which it is a playstation controller so it's the very end uh when he's about to destroy this shit like you could see there's Israel. i just had it wow perfect aim until the very end it's the stupid you can see the X, the square. The only get oh no, there's the. It, it's a PlayStation controller with the uh, Xbox uh, layup of having the D-pad here and then the other analog stick up here. I don't know. I. Oh, okay, with both analog sticks being down here, putting it up here. Eh, I don't know. Uh, but in any case. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, basically, uh, the, the whole idea is that they're trying to, she's trying to build this float for them, for her parents, while dad's also trying to get the perfect Christmas, Christmas shot. The, get ready, Anne. Uh, Andreas is trying to attack, trying to try and attack them, and also, where is it? Where is this? Hold on. Uh, Rebecca Sugar is in this? And the only reason I know this, and the only reason, and this is the only reason I know this, is because of Twitter. Because, I ain't gonna lie, if I saw Donna Terrace in the Owl House, I probably wouldn't know who she is either. <laughs> like, like I, I mean, honestly, out of all the creators, Alex Hirsch and Donna Terrace are probably the, on, are probably the only two that I've seen most, and it's probably because of Twitter. I wouldn't know that this is Rebecca Sugar. Um, probably even her singing was going on. And... For the rest of this episode, there's not brought up anything that obviously this is Rebecca Sugar or not, which I think adds a little more credence to my idea that a lot of the background characters of season three are actual cast members um, of Amphibia. But uh, uh, she just walked throughout the entire episode singing about Christmas, which again, they cram in everything about Christmas except Jesus. When I, it's, I, it's really funny. Something on the breeze. It might be slightly snowing or seventy degrees. Regardless of your hemisphere, the holiday donate or call get call. I didn't notice that one. I'm not gonna get copyright strike for Rebecca Sugar's song. Also, there's that dog. That's that old dog from the '90s or the early 2000s that does the flips. I remember that dog. Uh. Basically, Anne calls in every favor she can. Almost every favor she can. I think the only one who didn't come in was Terry to help uh, build things. But also, again, the way I'm pretty sure this is going to end is setting up for the final battle. Like, showing, like, yeah, she has so many new friends that can help her with getting to Amphibia and fighting and everything. Uh, which I do like. She, got, she calls uh, uh, the two techies to help with building the flow and technical things. Uh... Uh, Dr. Jan to help uh, with uh, props and stuff like that. And then... Oh, wait, right here. Bringing up Krampus! I'm get There's some Krampus uh, talk here. I like that. Krampus is a cool... Krampus is a cool bit of history. Uh, and Krampus has actually been coming up a lot more now, I think, in more recent years. Um, at least I've noticed more, I guess. Of... Uh, of being like that horror element of Christmas, which I like. Also hot chocolate. I love hot chocolate. But uh, I do like how Krampus keeps popping up a little bit more and more. And like, she goes through like every kind of different like, thing about it. Rudolph? Uh, Scrooge? Again, I wouldn't know this is Rebecca Sugar. I just assume she's just some homeless person with a guitar walking around singing about Christmas. Oh, yeah. Again, very festive looking thing that doesn't look out of place anywhere and that's a very neat coincidence. Also, another thing is that it's shaped like a moth which was like the whole thing, symbolism of dying which I thought maybe that's going to connect to Marcy more. Which, one, also the whole thing that there's a Christmas in Amphibia is because of Marcy. Um, for you guys, since you've done so. 
Anyways, these guys, show them the... This is a badass float. I ain't gonna lie. This is a badass float that they made. This is a really freaking cool float. Like, I was expecting because Anne at one point has a blueprint showing the, the float. And I looked at that and I'm like, it's not gonna look anything like this. They made it look like it. You know, that's cool. I like that. I, the... The easy thing could have been it would have been a shitty float, but no, they actually make it look like a cool float. I'm like, hell yeah. Which I do love this running gag of uh Wow. This is amazing. <laughs> but what a line dead and sick. I wasn't gonna like just serve it. Let's see, it's right here. This one. Not 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 the running gag of that he keeps getting the wrong photos. Gosh dang it! I will get the perfect holiday photo. Oh I will die trying! Ah, I'm sorry, Santa! <laughs> I love that because all the way at the very end. Oh my god, perfect timing! When in the end when Andreas takes over a giant Santa Claus, which one I want to bring up something about this fight. But one, also I love that Andreas took it over with this robot mech, and I kinda like the tech the analogy of like, oh nanobots making skeleton for the Okay, cool. But I love this part. I mean, oh, oh, oh. That's funny too, but <laughs> uh, that's a really good callback, callback cause throughout the entire episode that sucker's been falling off and I love that bit that bit is great um, also this look back of the neck this is the back of the neck of where this damn thing is basically they gotta shoot the tree at Andreas to kill him to kill the, the robot when he takes over silent night Let's just forget the cartoon logic of that's actual fireworks. Merry Christmas. Oh, I love this too. Hey, thanks. You too. Wait, no. <laughs> Anyways, thing goes through chest, somehow through back of the neck. <laughs> I it's an animation error. I get like it's an animation error. It, it literally is. But eh, it's 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 one bit that I, I kind of laugh at. It's like it's like it comes through here, came out back. Came out this way. Not like because it's angled this way, because it goes straight through. And like the next scene, like somewhere something was mixed up. Because yeah, you see right here, it's stabbed through the chest. Honestly, I'm like, that's not where that should be coming out of. Also, this is great too. I love this scene. Look, it's snowing. No, Ash. It's Ash. I love how it ended. I love how the music ended there. That was freaking great. Uh, and where was it? There's there was one more bit. There was one more bit. What was it? Shit. Oh yeah, here's when he was taking over the float. Oh yeah, when he's trying to find Ham. This is a, this is a cute and this is nice. Would mean we had finally done it. Fortwood, I know what it's like feeling out of place. Oh yeah. <laughs> Boon Choi. That was easy. Ah, oh, Andreas, you freaking dumbass. All right, well yeah, that, that's freaking great. And then one, also, I love this part too. Oh wait, no. It, oh, I remember what it was. It was. It was before she showed the, her them the float. This seemed this had me this had me laughing. Because here's the thing. I I recently played Miles Morales Spider-Man. And I, if you don't know how that game setting, that game is setting in New York City during Christmas time, which New York is somewhat similar to Chicago. Um I was playing that game in the summer, and I was playing and I'm like, God, I'm probably gonna miss like because I'm moving to Texas. I'm like, God, I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss Christmas. Like, well, I wanna miss like the you know, the the snow and like you know, seeing the white snow play and all that stuff. And then, like, two days ago, it was, like, 30 degrees at nighttime. And I was like, screw this noise. I'm going to Texas. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I hate this. And it's not even snowing. It's just cold here. Um, Chicago is terrible in the winter. Never come to Chicago in the winter time. Uh, but, no, I, this, 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 had a, this got a chuckle out of me. Because one thing about Texas is oh black santa oh one thing about texas is 
if it, it does sometimes snow in Texas in the morning, by the t afternoon, that is gone. And even then, the snow in Texas is warm, which is weird. Not like it's like, oh, it's going to warm you up or some shit. No, but I can, me and my brother can have a ginormous snowball fight in the front yard without gloves, without jackets, without anything. Maybe a sweater. We could have a giant snowball fight and our hands would not get cold. But you come here, as soon as your hand touches the air, you get frostbite. That's a little over-exaggeration. But you, it is, of yes, you will get cold. You will feel the, the nose hairs in your nose freeze up. And mind you, yes, people in Canada and everyone north of Chicago probably have had it worse. I can believe that. But, fa. <laughs> That, that right there. It's like, it's California. Why the hell is there snow? It's like, oh yeah. No, it burns. Not only does it melt, it turns into fire. I love that. It's like, yeah, no, we're, it's freaking hot here. Calm the hell out. It's like, we're not having snow. That's great. And then, um, oh, this is a good one. Daddy, is Santa going to be okay? <laughs> no, Timmy. I don't think so. That's a Rick and Morty shit right there. Um. Anyway. Oh, yeah, and then basically at the end, oh. Anne explains that, oh, Christmas is about, you know, spending time together and presents and all that stuff. Which it is, definitely is now. But it is very funny that they completely bypassed the whole idea of, oh, well, for, actually, first it was a Norse, it wasn't Norse. It was a pagan holiday of the winter solstice. Christianity's like, no, 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 we can't have that shit. Uh, we're gonna make it Jesus' birthday. And then, you know, it became Jesus' birthday for the longest time. And then it's like, no, 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 we're right. No, 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 no. We're just stick, we're gonna stick to just presents and this. Even though, yes, like, my family still suffers having this for Jesus' birthday. But, you know, so I'm going to because my birthday's three days after that. So I like to always say, like, oh, yeah, my, my birthday's three days after Jesus. It's like if you took Jesus' birthday and then the three days before he resurrected, and you got my birthday. <laughs> See, I get t <laughs> God. Anyways, that's how I. That's how I sometimes tell my family if they ever forget my birthday. You, know, you remember Jesus, when Jesus is born, and then it took three days for him to rise, and you get me. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun. That's a fun one. My mo like my mother hates it <laughs> when I bring that up. <laughs> In any case. Also, you guys picture. How candid, baby. Oh, that was the other one. Before I bring up the last bit, one. This is cute, but uh, it, it's there's this bit. Oh, also, that is a very cute frame of Miss Boonchoy. Um, it's it it's 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 with the pictures. Hold on. Candid. Oh, right here. This year's hot. Right here. Candid. Right here. It's gonna be groundbreaking. Huh. What was last year's theme? Ungulates. <laughs> <laughs> Hoof and Merry Dairy Christmas. One. It's a funny picture, sure. Um, this is probably... She's dressed as a demon. A demon! But, uh... I love this. What the heck? <laughs> it feels so out of place. Like, here's the thing. If I watch The Ghost of Molly McGee, this is a show, Ghost, if I watch The Ghost of Molly McGee, one thing I love bringing up about in that show is that any cliches that happen, the characters, mostly Sprig, but the characters usually will point them out. It's like, oh, the rich girl wants to offer to help with our horror movie. I wonder if she's going to take over and try to make it all about her or her family, stuff like that. Um, and then, like, Scratch, and, like, Scratch would say some shit like that. And then, you know, obviously it would happen. Like, this, <laughs> I love because it's a weird-ass picture. And this just feels like, I don't know, this, like, this almost feels like the voice actor. Or if, like, Spring himself suddenly became conscious. It was just like, wh what? <laughs> like, he just questioned his reality for a minute. <laughs> for, what, ten seconds? For, like, three seconds. It's like, oh, my God. See? Like, I don't know, it's so good. Ungulates. What the heck? <laughs> like, he's just like, what? I, he's like, I don't even know what the hell that is. 
What is that? I love that so much. But then, to get more into the story thing, which also one, I find it really funny. He takes this long to charge up this damn cannon when he can just shoot him. Also, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna see that. What do we have left anyways, something. Also, I love her outfit. It looks cool. And also, she has stuff in it. Anything. I would have loved, honestly, if she went super in this episode. But. We gotta light it on fire? Finally! But, uh, yeah, he charges it up and then fires it. Yeah, I already showed that. But, yeah. And then, basically, uh, he destroys the so controller and blames that. So close and also, I, and this reminds me of a scene in the new Star Wars, which. One, I love the new, I love the sequel trilogy, and two, The Force Awakens has some of the best, some of the best comedy of of the, some of the Star Wars ones with like the shit where the coward just starts busting shit with his lightsaber. So then he goes, anything else? <laughs> like that's kind of right of that when he just starts breaking all that shit. He goes, anything else? The girl escaped. <laughs> and then he said something else, but yeah, I, I love that shit. Or the point where he starts destroying shit and then like. They when he starts destroying the ship when Ray escapes and the stormtrooper goes no 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 we're going the other way <laughs> like I love that I I the what I love those scenes just remind me of that which also I feel like Star Wars might have had a bit of a obviously of a connection to this obviously not only with the three movies prequels being mentioned uh, but also the lightsaber blade and also uh, <laughs> that was pathetic also Marcy seems to be in there. But Marcy, kind of her design, because actually looking at her design, kind of reminds me of Darth Vader. Can you call yourself a king? I love the echo. I love call yourself a king, because of all the multi personalities in her head right now. And I also love that she's still connected to the the core, even though it just it, to me doesn't that mean that this is a giant weak spot that they just need to cut this and Marcy is free. It doesn't matter against the full force of our army. None shall stand. Not Anne, not Earth, not anyone. Giant army, great. Um, let's see here. <laughs> also, yeah, the mom looks like she's in pain, but it turns out she's laughing. I'm like, that's really weird. Like, this, it looks like she's, like, had indigestion or something. I don't know. But, yeah. Eventually, at the end, says, you know, about loving each other, having fun with each other, the family, and stuff like that. Uh, Sprig made Anna... Hero. Thanks. Sprig made, uh... Really, it's dumb. This for Sprig, because, all, oh yeah, there's a whole subplot of, oh yeah, you need to get something good or you ruined Christmas. Uh, made her made uh, her this, which is pretty cool. I didn't notice that it's made of nut bolts, and then that I did notice that it's paper, and then you got some bead arms, and then, uh, yeah, that's cool. It's you, because, you know... My hero. That's cute. I love that. That's cute. I love that. And then homeless Rebecca Sugar walking in the earth. That's what makes it special. It's a special. It's a special. It's our special. I'm and then what I think R2? But, and then here's this bit, which one, multiple reasons, uh, one holiday soap holiday edition. That's funny. That is funny. I can't imagine spending the holidays without your family. I know how hard it is to be apart and not know if you'll ever see each other again. So I'm writing to let you I, know that I you knew about this lie. because of Twitter. Just I haven't seen that. I'm not watching this on the day that they aired. I had things and stuff. Back home safe. Signed, a friend. One. She says your daughters are safe and they bring him trapped in another world and bring him back. Signed a friend. I don't think Marcy and Sasha had that many friends. So I think her parents would their parents would know who Anne is. But who knows? Also, I'm pretty sure that sounds just like crazy. And then this. This. I learned about this. Because of Twitter. And it's like, oh, the Wu family. So it probably means that Marcy has more than her parents. Maybe is some sister, maybe some siblings. Which I'm like, okay, cool. And there was this. is Mr. Waybright, Mrs. Waybright. Because they say like, oh, maybe the parents are divorced. And stuff like that. And suddenly everyone's like, oh my god, she's a child of divorce. That explains so much. I'm like, oh my god, I forgive her. I'm like, screw you. <laughs> screw you. <laughs> 
are multiple reasons. If the reason you forgive Sasha is because of her be parents being divorced, screw you on that. Screw you. This girl literally stopped Andreas, took over Amphibia for her and her girlfriends so they could rule together. Her friends said, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> and so Sasha goes, okay, I'll just send you guys home like you wanted. Well, Marcy didn't want it, but... And, you know, was going to send them home until she found out she didn't know how to. And then... And then... Not only that shit. Not only that shit. But... Oh, obviously then then you know Marcy and Anne put Andres back on the throne as king Marcy then also review revealing that she that like her parents were moving away and so because of that she trapped her and her friends in amphibia consciously did this consciously got them trapped there nearly got them killed and then also saying shit like, I'm the reason you have your family, your frog family and all this stuff. And you all, for, and these people, and I specifically, maybe you the viewer, but you all forgave her by the end of that episode. Especially us, who we didn't, especially the ones who saw it when it really released, not the leaked one, where we then also knew that she was alive next season. You all forgave her almost immediately. But you're going to say shit about Sasha and not forgive her for saving Anne. For for one, end, end of season one, letting go. If I remember correctly, she let go. She was like, I can't let you fall, Anne, and let's go. And then not only that. She gets shat on by the planners during the dinner. She then also, again, saved Amphibia. Even if it wasn't knowingly, saved Amphibia so her and her friends could rule Amphibia together. They didn't want that, so she was going to send them home. And you, this is what makes you forgive her? That her parents are divorced. Not all the good shit that she did beforehand. Or hell, the character development before this episode. Where you see her, you know, help. Where her she decides to, yeah, become a good person for Anne. And basically acts as a guardian for uh, Wartwood. When she could have just left. I'm sorry. Screw off. <laughs> I'm sorry. If this is... The, if, oh, they're a child of divorce. Is the reason... If she's a child of divorce, is the reason why you forgave her? Yeah, screw off. Like, really? Like, no. 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 Hell no. Like, no. No, 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 no. This should not be the damn reason... Just to put on a leaderboard here real quick. Sasha. Yes, did a lot of this selfishly. Mostly for her and her friends. Two. Again, saved Amphibia. Took down the Tyrant King, which I guess would go with saved Amphibia. Um, didn't want her friend to die with her, so let her go. And, <laughs> and also was, you know... You're gonna send her friends home. That's three damn good things that she did that basically would have like saved everyone. Then you have that she did for her friends, mind you. And then you have Marcy, which no shame against Marcy. I do like Marcy, especially now. But Marcy, she trapped them all in amphibia. Every time they nearly died, uh, I'm gonna count that what is maybe over 20. Um, let's see here. What else could I place on this list? Uh, she knew that they were trapped there and had answers. Completely forget that. So let's see, 21, 22. Uh, and mind you, 20 is a low ball in the number of how many times Anne and Sasha have probably died. 
Um, so, and let's see here. Put Andreas back on the throne, knowing that he's a dimensional hopping king, and, you know, probably subjugated a lot of things and people. So, about 25, 26 things on this list right now. Sasha, three good things. And Marcy, mind you, Marcy's, Marcy's actions cost way more damage. And you all forgave her by the end because she got stabbed. Mind you, yeah, it was a pretty dramatic thing. But still, you forgave her for that, really? Whatever. In any case, yeah, so divorced parents, that apparently excuses Sasha for some people of every bad thing she's ever done. Not, you know, all the other, hold on a minute. I just wanted to give that little rant out <laughs> because I saw that on Twitter. I'm like, you... You morons! I'm like, really? That's what makes you forgive her? Really? That? When Marcy has done way more horrible shit. But she gets a pass right after that episode, but it takes you about two seasons to forgive Sasha? No. <laughs> no. Hell, Sasha also saved them in the temple. I'm going to count that as another win. Uh, I'm going to count that as another win. So four wins on that note. And Marcy almost got them killed in the freaking Wisdom Temple. So I'm going to count that as another negative. In any case, it's beside the point. Let's kill up. Eh, this is a fun episode. This is a good Christmas episode. Um, oh, I, I, I didn't see the ending bit. Hold on. So Anne finally gave... Gave the butterfly that she bought her, bought her mom an amphibia. That's cute. Ah, she got a nerf gun. Oh, the arachnid one. Uh, how to direct. That's freaking great. Got her a Gatlin nerf gun. That's freaking awesome. And then arachnid kid. Or man, I don't know. Robo's alive. Kind of, uh, you see Anne use him for like a light at one point, so. Also, yeah, he was conscious like, at one point, wasn't he? That one episode. But, yeah. This is a fun episode. Is Christmas about interest? It's all garbage! It does. He's right. <laughs> it's freaking great. But, yeah, this, this is a cool episode. Uh... I also like the music sounding differently, slightly. So I think it did. I can't remember. That's just a bad. That's just badass too. But anyways, tell me what you think. Comment below. Thanks for watching. Show videos I've done. Links on my Facebook relationship. Show me videos. And please tell me, did it really take you that long to forgive Sasha? I kind of want to know. But thanks for watching. Please share my videos. Hopefully you enjoy this, and we will. See you later. That is a cool thing. I, 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 it would be cool that's hinting at the transformation of like all the calamity powers together. But also, I, I would much rather see each of them have the individual. Also, I did I bring it up? I don't know if I did. Um, one last thing before we actually do do end this. Um, <laughs> that was pathetic. Marcy's obviously still in there because of with the with the holding the D twenty, but also like. If there's a massive weakness, like her being connected to the cords, did I already say this? I feel like I did. I feel like there's a massive weakness, like, as soon as you unplug that, like, wouldn't Marcy just take over again? I don't know. Thank you for watching the videos, and we will. See you later. Also, one last thing I forgot. This happens two minutes and 50 seconds in. Due to all the normal traditions, carols, cookies, decorating the tree, kill. She's saying all the stuff they want to do, like decorating the tree. This is all stuff they could do. Um... I don't know if you see the tree back here is already decorated or that it literally opens like this. <laughs> what tree were they going to decorate? Also, frog angel.